Now, we are an inflammation nation, and that's what I wrote my book about. Inflammation is a triggering mechanism of all disease. If you want to learn more about this, go back to my previous lecture, An Inflammation Nation, uh, from COVID to cancer, how to lower inflammation naturally. I have three or four lectures that are full hour and a half on just what this slide and what inflammation is. But in essence, anything that the word itis is just means inflammation of that area. So arthritis, bronchitis, gastritis, dermatitis, you know, osteoarthritis, prostatitis, rhinitis, tendonitis, thyroiditis, these are all inflammatory conditions. We have 200 of them. So what I work with my patients and I can work with you if you become a patient is how do we find your triggers and how do we reverse these conditions? Because conventional medicine and even natural therapies are also going to be treating all of these things separately. Here's something for your arthritis. Here's something for your allergies. Here's something for your stomach. Here's something for your joints. Here's something for your thyroid. But if we look at what are the triggers that are coming in that's causing this inflammation systemically, this is where you want to be eating more of a plant-based diet. And we're going to talk about the test that can help you with that. Again, going to anti-inflammatory plant-based proteins. Again, this is an important slide. So I'll show that one more time. Now, in the meantime, before we change the diet, and as we're in the transition of changing the diet, and the patient still has inflammatory problems. I have joint pain, Dr. Pai, I have arthritis. I have migraine headaches. My, I have my GI tracts inflamed, I have colitis. I have other issues of, of inflammation. Then what I'm famous for and what we've created the gold standard is called Bosmeric SR. It has four patented ingredients at the highest clinical doses uh, possible that has more clinical studies in humans than any other product on the market. In fact, during COVID, we even had a double-blinded randomized control clinical trial with two of our patent ingredients in here that helped reduce the inflammatory cascade during COVID that was actually given to hospital, peer-reviewed, and published. So we're looking at now like how to utilize natural therapies, even when we give certain, you know, people are getting cancer therapies. We're now having research with these ingredients that are in our product at the doses, how to make things synergistic. How do we make something more targeted and less side effects, right? So we're looking at very specific pharmacology aspects of using ancient wisdom with modern technology. And this is something that we've perfected. We've also been able to put it in a bilayered caplet. So it's a 20 minute onset of action. It's a fast acting, like people have a fast tab. You have a headache, you have a migraine, you have pain, boom, within 20 minutes it's reducing the inflammation and it's lasting over eight hours. It's a sustained release. We're the only company, the only product in the market in the last 16 years that has developed this technology. No one is, is able to do that yet. Now, We've done so well, not to brag, but I have to say this because it's important. This is where the problem with the internet is now. We have large companies you know, using the tra our trademark name and they're, they're advertising, drawing customers thinking that they're getting our product and then they'll sell them to a different product on their website. And now so much so there was a company that actually was making a counterfeit product and selling on the internet. So test number one, let's get to that. If you're pro-inflammatory, you have some kind of itis condition, which most people do. Maybe you're even plant-based. You still have some kind of arthritis, colitis. You have headaches. Maybe you got gastritis. Maybe you have thyroiditis. Whatever your issue is, we want to check for inflammatory triggers in your diet. I have a whole section in my book, An Inflammation Nation, that will go into some detail. I also have a lecture, The Stacking Effects of Inflammation, on The Real Truth About Health, previous lecture given uh, that you can look up to go into detail. Two types of reactions that you have, an immediate and a delayed. You can eat something within an hour triggers an inflammatory response. Heartburn, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, brain fog, fatigue. I'm achy, right? We're not talking about anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is 2%. So we're not talking about life-threatening. We're just talking about something that just triggers an inflammatory response. Like you getting a text, you'll get a response. You'll probably respond back within an hour. And a delayed is an IgG4, which happens a few hours after you consume the food up to four days later. Again, it's not life-threatening. It's just triggering inflammation from evoking an immune response a little bit later going on. Now, what the problem with food testing is the following. It's who orders it and which types, right? So MDs are limited to what kind of panel. They only look for anaphylactic reactions because that's what they were trained in, right? We don't want you to die. Shellfish, eggs, dairy, peanuts, those kind of things like that. Like I have the peanut allergy. If you read my book, you'll understand why I'm so passionate with foods and inflammation. And they don't know how to check delays. They're not trained in rotation diets or, or cross reactions with foods. And so 
They only check the common things that might kill a patient, but not things that are triggering inflammation there daily that's not life-threatening. Now, on the flip side, when you look at naturopaths, chiropractors, health coaching, and online testing, they can only test for delays. They can't test for the immediate reactions. They can't get the immediate because they're not doctors, so that legally they can't order them. So they're only giving you 50%. So both sides are lacking in giving the patient the full evaluation of do you have food sensitivities and which are they? They're also not trained in, in classes or rotations because that's not in the curriculum of, of understanding allergy. And then there's now a big explosion online in social media with like finger prick testing. You can send in a little drop of blood and they can test all these things. They're not FDA clear. They're not their best qualitative, not quantitative. So they can kind of tell you maybe you might have a problem, but is it really significant or not? That's the problem with, with doing these smaller tests. And most of them are not validated with standard laboratory testing. I recommend getting both immediate and delayed reactions. You need to know if you're eating a food, there's a problem now or is a problem later. Right. And, and we need to have panels. If someone's coming to my office and they're eating a standard American diet, I'm getting 64 foods of the standard American panel. And if they're plant based, I'm going to go 64 foods of the plant based panel. We want the common foods occurring commonly in the person's diet to test that. And we want to make sure that these tests are FDA cleared, inspected by the College of American Pathologies, and also that they're verified. So I go to a lot of conferences and I see these alternative laboratory companies because there's now that's where all the money's at. People are, are, are making laboratory companies. And They'll say, we have a proprietary test that no one else has. If anybody has a proprietary test that can't be tested outside of their lab, do not buy it because it needs to be verified. Otherwise, they're selling you information that no one can verify. And there's a lot of the allergy companies that right now will say, we have the specific test. No one else can do it, but no one else can follow it. Then we don't really follow. We want to have things that are standard in the science so that we know, okay, this is, this is it. But what we do is we make the comprehensive panel for that appropriate testing. We also go further. We want to check for gluten. We want to make sure, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, kind of always say gluten's a problem. It's not. If someone has a gluten sensitivity, it is. If they have a trigger with gluten, they can trigger an inflammatory response between one week and three months. However, if they don't have a gluten problem, they can eat organic you know, grains that have gluten in them. In fact, you know, vital wheat gluten, which is an important source of protein in the plant-based world, that's been around since Genghis Khan time. Like These are not new things, right? The problem is we have this, gl this gluten problem because of the glyphosate which I did write in my book, which now there's books and there's like research studies and, and whole, there's probably even panel discussions now talking about the role of glyphosate being sprayed onto the wheat, binding to gluten, gluten, and proteins, triggering this inflammatory autoimmune gut reaction problem with us. So you want to definitely define whether that person has a problem or not. Because a lot of people come and say, why well, avoid gluten? Why? Well, maybe they're trying to be low carb, but they're trying to lose weight. We're not looking at that. We're looking at, do you really need to eat this or avoid this? If you have, if you have the problem, avoid it. You'll feel better. But then we can actually fix your gut. 